It's no secret, I love shooting Polaroids. Every year when Fall Polaroid Week comes around, I can't wait to get out there and film a video. And although uh, those are the most fun for me to film, they do end up being amongst the least watched videos, which is okay because the people who do watch them are big fans of shooting Polaroids themselves. And we get this really great conversation going, which is the point of Polaroid Week to begin with. So last fall, when I hit upload on, uh, on my video, I wasn't really expecting much. I was using my RB67 and this Resovot back, um, and I gotta say, I still can't believe how much of a response I got for that video. It ended up being probably one of my most watched, and everyone was just so enthusiastic, I was blown away. Unfortunately, there was kind of this like vein of disappointment that ran through the conversation because Resovat just doesn't make these backs anymore. I got the last production batch uh, from them. And so a lot of people were asking me where they could find them, how they could make them themselves, and I just didn't have an answer. But that's why we're here tonight, and I've got something special for you. As I mentioned, the response I got from my 2020 Fall Polaroid Week video blew me away. The enthusiasm about wanting to shoot Polaroids with an RB67 was not only evident in the comments section of my channel, but also across other platforms like Facebook. And that's where I met Aline. Based out of Washington, D.C., Aline is the founder of Analog Studio, an online shop that offers, among other things, conversion kits designed to shoot Polaroid film on cameras such as the RB67. Having just purchased a Resovat conversion kit for the same purpose, I thought this would be a great opportunity to try out a similar product still offered today. A glance at Aline's Instagram page shows that he's not only a great photographer, but also an instant film lover with a clear passion for creating and revamping products for the community. So by now, I'm sure you've all guessed that, yes, I did buy one of these conversion kits, and we're going to build it together tonight. But first, a little rundown on what we're going to need. First off, we're obviously going to need an impossible instant lab. We'll also need some isopropyl alcohol, a conversion kit from Analog Studio, a box cutter, needle nose pliers, a pair of cutters, a double zero Phillips head screwdriver, a Torx 3 screwdriver, some Q-tips, and a sanding block. Instant labs, like classic Polaroid cameras, are old and because I don't always know how they were stored or taken care of, the first thing I do is clean the rollers with some isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip. This might take a few runs to get them cleared out, but then I don't run the risk of uneven development or lines across my frames. Also, when dealing with 3D printed plastic, I always like to give it a once over with a fine sanding block. While this is an optional step, I like to keep any stray filaments from getting in where they don't belong. First off, and I can't stress this enough, this is not a how-to video. If you are building your own conversion kit, I highly suggest that, as I did, you visit the Analog Studio YouTube channel where you'll find detailed step-by-step -step videos on how to disassemble your Instant Lab and build your own Polaroid back. There are a few cringeworthy and stressful steps, however having already had the experience of building the Resovat back made me feel a little more confident in what I was doing. I had to take extra care not to strip any screws as they will all be reused, and while this wasn't a problem during the analog studio build, I had stripped a screw while disassembling my instant lab for the Resovat conversion, which made the process more difficult. Some things, however, remain the same. No matter how many times I do this, I don't think I'll ever be fully comfortable with ripping the lab into two pieces with my bare hands. Since a lot of the pieces from the Instant Lab will be reused in the conversion, it's all about the little details, and having the right tools on hand is key to ensure that important components are removed safely without damaging what's needed. But step by step, you'll get through it, and eventually your Instant Lab will be fully disassembled.
So at this point in the build, my confidence was soaring. Things were happening as they should, and each step was taking less and less time. But as a lot of you might know, taking things apart is often easier than putting them back together. And one thing that I've learned dealing with 3D printed material is that when something doesn't feel right, something is definitely wrong. So we're going to go ahead and push pause right here because this is the moment that I realized I had broken the conversion kit. Let's rewind. Remember those first two screws I took out? And then the next two? Well, they're supposed to be two short screws and two long screws, but as you can see here, they're all the same. Now, you're supposed to use short screws to attach the lab to the conversion kit because while one side of the lab has a spacer, the other does not. While using my long screw to attach the two pieces, I accidentally broke off the piece on the conversion kit that holds the screw in place. I've made a lot of dumb purchases in my life, but this is one that I stand by. I've got several of these broken cameras that I used to salvage little screws and springs, or in this case, a small washer that I used as a spacer for my long screw, once I crazy glued the conversion kit back together. I have since spoken to Eileen, and he is now sourcing small screws to include with kits as needed. Once that problem was dealt with, things went pretty smoothly, although I have to admit I was still a little shaken up after having broken the conversion kit in the first place. Something like this can be stressful enough, but with the added variable of having everything I do filmed, most of my energy went towards trying not to freak out and start swearing on camera. Due to my nerves, I inadvertently jumped over a step and forgot to check that the dark slide could be easily removed and inserted before fully assembling the rest, as there can be some adjustments needed at that point. This made me have to fiddle around too much with the dark slide in the field, causing light leaks, but I later disassembled and made the proper adjustments. And lastly, so I don't forget. Okay, so that's done. Whew, what a relief. Uh, that was a little stressful, but it actually went surprisingly better than I thought it was going to. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm not much of a tinkerer. I don't really build things, but that went well. It's still a win in my book. <laughs> So if you think you want to give it a go yourself, uh, you can head on over to the site and pick up a conversion kit. Or if you don't really want to take any chances, uh, he also offers fully assembled backs. So let's load this up, head on outside and take a few test shots.
the first few shots with the analog studio uh, conversion kit. Um, I gotta say, first impressions are that I'm really liking it already. Uh, it is a little bit less refined than the Resovat back, for sure, um, but it's also a fraction of the price, which is really exciting, and it's still available today, which is the most exciting part about it. Um, this is pretty much the only way you can shoot Polaroids on your RB67 right now. So if you are thinking about picking one up for yourself, I'm going to leave the link down below. Um, you can check out Analog Studio's website, ask any questions you've got, that's all going to be down there. Uh, as well, I'm also going to leave a link to an article that I wrote for emulsive.org where I go a lot more in depth in uh, what I'm thinking, how I'm feeling, a little deeper than just first impressions. Uh, so if you're interested in that, that will be there as well. And don't forget that Spring Polaroid Week, it will be running from April 18th to the 23rd. So let's all grab our Polaroid cameras and I'll see you out there. Thank you.